if you can please put your first last name and the school that you're from into the chat, we will begin the program. So I'd like to welcome you to our Teacher in the Workplace Fall 2020 program. Uh, we hope you enjoy it. I am Colleen Prechto. I am one of the career counselors from Workforce Solutions for North Central PA. And I work along with Jocelyn in the Business and Education Partnership programs, where we bring businesses and schools together so that we can show students what careers we have available in our region, what those careers consist of and skills they might need in their future. So I do the Jefferson County Schools and I also work with the Dubois Area School District. And Jocelyn. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I know you've already had a long day, but I am Jocelyn Bash. I'm the career counselor for Clearfield County Schools minus two boys. And um, this year we're just working to build virtual programs to help your students with exploration and um, for readiness. So if you have any ideas for your classroom or your school and you just need an extra pair of hands, I'm happy to, to jump in and do that. So I hope to uh, hear from you as you learn more about what business and education partnership can do for you um, and your students. And again, because we do everything virtually, um, I was disappointed that I don't get to go and see real people, so I have to show all of you my Steelers scarf because it's a very exciting week, you know. Um, but anyway, thank you for letting me do that, and I hope you have a great evening tonight and for the next two weeks because we have a lot to share with you. Pam, can you tell a little bit more about us? You're on mute, Pam. Got it. There we I'm go. I'm a little slow, but I got it. No nope, problem. Um, Really happy to see everyone here tonight. Uh, my name is Pam Strike. I am the Director of Strategic Pl Planning for Workforce Solutions. And we just want, I know a lot of you know a little bit about us, and I know I've met several of you over the years. Um, we are the Workforce Development Board, one of 23 across Pennsylvania that serves the counties of Cameron, Elk, Jefferson, Clearfield, McKean, and Potter. So I know you heard Jocelyn and Colleen and they work mainly in the Jefferson County and Clearfield County region. We do work with the community education centers um, in the remaining four counties to try to make sure that we're doing things consistently. So that's a work in progress. Um, so this isn't a regional, a regional event. We wanted to open it up across our region. Um, and one of the main reasons is because we had some money we had to spend by the end of December um, and we were not giving it back. And there, it's more than that and Colleen and Jocelyn are going to get into it, but we did apply for a grant through labor and industry um, for teacher in the workplace and some schools also applied for some funding for teacher in the workplace, but um, it was open to workforce development boards. Um, when the pandemic hit, we were working with a partner that was not able to continue the teacher in the workplace, and we have embraced technology, just like all of you have, and um, I'm learning, we're all learning, um, but we are, we're really happy that we were able to provide this and um, keep some of this funding in our region, um, and we've done a good job. I'm just saying that because there's like 60 some people registered. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, just a little bit about a workforce development board. We're responsible for the workforce system in our region. We can provide you labor market data, which you're gonna hear a little bit more about in another session. Um, we charter the Pennsylvania Career Link system. We write grants. We're always looking for money that has anything to do with workforce. We partner with a lot of schools, economic development agencies, and others on grant applications. Um, anything you can think of, please reach out to us. Um, if you don't know the answer, we'll try to find out for you. Um, anything workforce. We um, help with the HPO list, the high priority occupation list, which you'll hear more about over the, the next sessions. Um, but I'm gonna stop there. I'm excited to be part of this. I'm actually offering my support to Colleen and Jocelyn and I'm excited to see everything that happens over the next month or so. So 
I'm going to turn it back to you guys. Thanks, Pam. We do have a few minutes. Our first tour is not going to show up till closer to 5.15. So while we're waiting for them to show up, how many of you are familiar with the soft skill training, different trainings that you've done, anything like that? You can just put the raise your hand button that is under your reactions. Does everyone know the reaction button? Down at your bottom, you click the reaction, and you can do a little thumbs up. So we do have a couple of thumbs up. So the term soft skill is interchangeable with employability skills. Um, it has many different terms that all mean the same thing. And when we're talking about soft skills, we're talking about communication, teamwork, time management, different things on that. They're skills that our students can't see. So it's, it, it can be hard to teach because it's not always physically available to show how you do these soft skills. So we thought it would be great to have this program for our teachers where we get to take you through a few of our businesses, companies around the region, and you can actually see what type of skills they're using within their companies. But then following up, we will on day two have a panel discussion with those companies and some other companies discussing what they feel is a gap with their new employees under the soft skill realm. So we will have a discussion on that. We will also hear some labor industry information, labor market information that will also tell what the areas of soft skills are lacking in. And on the third day, we're going to actually get into some activities where we can show you how you can incorporate soft skills into your everyday classroom. So we're hoping you will enjoy all of this. And Jocelyn, do you have anything to add? Um, I don't have anything to add there, but I did just let Bev Air in. So I'm not sure with your, uh, with, uh, where they are, but. I have to find him. It'll be <laughs> Doug and Doug. And there's a Michael that might be. Yes, good. Michael and Doug oh. both need on. Just keeps jumping on me. Oh, I guess I can do this. I do not see Doug. There's Michael. It actually said Bev Air. I don't know if you changed that, but. There he is. I think he's still joining. Doug, when you join, can you unmute and let us know, please? I see Michael. Oh. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good. I think Sorry. I need to make you a co-host or a host so you can share your screen. Oh, we're not sharing a screen. We're just doing a video. Okay. Am I ready then? Do we um, have to share a screen? If you share your screen, it makes it bigger so everyone can see it. But participants, if you are, if you want to put yours in speaker view, that'll help as well if you haven't already done that. Oh, he can do it right. There we go. So let me give you guys your introduction. Hi, Hello, everyone. Hi, Doug. Tell him to hold on one second. So our first tour will begin with Beverage Air located in Brookville, PA. 
Beverage Air is a leading manufacturing of the commercial refrigeration units for the food service industry. If you haven't looked in your local newspaper recently, you may want to, as Beverage Air has been, uh, ha has an article written about them in the local newspaper this week with the work that they have been doing with our business and education partnership program. But to not take up any more time, we are going to turn it over to Doug Reinzel. He is going to be our guide through Beverage Air and Mike is going to be the cameraman. Mike Pompas. All right. There you go. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Beverage Air. My name is Doug Renzel, and I'm the brazing technician here. My cameraman for this evening is Michael Pompa. He's a mechanical engineer here at Beverage Air. Victory. We're trying to figure out why we decided to do our first live Zoom with 65 teachers here. But so tonight is our first experience doing this. So uh, what we're going to do is give you a quick tour of our refrigeration department and then we're going to walk you up to our school milk assembly line so you can see where your school milk coolers are made. So on this back wall here, you can see a, a big roll of copper. All of our parts come through these back doors. We have shelves full of parts. All the parts get delivered to each certain work area. And here is our CNC copper bending machine. This machine here gets programmed by the operator. And it, it bends, these bends for us. We use this machine so we have accurate bends on every single unit that we have. This machine gives us consistency and quality on our bends. We, over the years, we've discovered that if you use hand benders and people, they're not as accurate. So we're gonna, just follow me around here. We're gonna go around. As you're walking through here, you can see some of our completed refrigeration units here. Those are all loaded on carts, depending on what assembly line they go to. Here's what we call the hand bending area. This would be part of a refrigeration unit. As you can see, all the bends, some of these cannot be bent on the machine. So they have to be hand bent using this right here. Everything has to be measured and exactly correct in order to fit properly into the cabinet, depending on what unit is going in. So we have, oper we have operators here, they put all these bends into this, into these lines. Over here, you have a straight piece of copper, you've got a piece of cap tube, and this is where it's soldered together, and this is where you get your heat exchange in your refrigeration unit. Okay. As you can see, all these lines hanging on these bars and over here, all those lines are getting ready to get put onto a refrigeration unit. Okay, just follow me around here. And right here, you have a cart. Our material handlers put units or parts on a cart. It has all the parts necessary to complete the refrigeration unit. You can see right here, this unit is Assembled, you got your compressor and your condenser and your fan. What I'm doing here is I'm putting on my pr protective equipment. I'm gonna give you a quick brazing demonstration and explain to you why we use oxygen acetylene torches here at Beverage Air. Okay, right there is my, oh, okay, technical difficulties. We can handle that. Okay, that's my acetylene. Acetylene is your fuel gas on your torch. What you do is you back it off just a little bit, and then you mix in your oxygen. Your oxygen is your enhancer. That's what, 
that's what gives you more heat in your flame. What, whenever you're braising, you want to get what's called a neutral flame. If you have an inner, inner cone here, that's where most of your heat is at in the flame. So whenever you're braising up a unit, that's where you want to focus on. I could actually lay my hand next to the torch like that. I'm not going to get burned because it's such a concentrated heat. The reason we use the concentrated heat is because of how close everything is together. Like right here, we have a, a braised joint that we have to do, and we have a plastic fan. There's a wire here for the fan, and we never want to burn. We never want to burn the paint off of our compressors. We want to try to do a nice, clean job on our braises. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is, whenever you're brazing you have to get the copper to the proper temperature to melt this solid brazing rod that I have here. You can see the copper heating up. And if you, I don't know how well you can see this, but if you look at it, I only touch this on one side of the copper. And this brazing rod, is, it melts and it goes to the flow of where, where I put the heat at. Okay, so here's another quick example. I want to move the heat around, see where I'm focusing my heat at, right there on top of the joint that I want to do. Now I'm just going to touch the brazen rod real quick and it should wrap around. Okay, so that's, that's how you get a good quality braze joint on a refrigeration unit. This is definitely a skilled trade that not anybody can do. It takes practice. Here's what's happening. If, I always say that if you're doing this on a Friday afternoon and you're not paying attention to what you're doing, you get this too close, you literally melt through it in seconds. See how hot that gets? And then it just melts. Now on a refrigeration unit, that would be scrap and you would have to start all over again. So it's definitely a skill that you really need, you need to be trained for and you need to pay attention to what you're doing. Okay, let me take... Let me take this stuff back off. All right, the next step of the process is our helium booth, okay? The units come down this roller track and they go into our helium booth. Our helium booth here is a fresh air unit. It's positive pressure. We have fresh air coming in and we have an exhaust going out. So there's no background helium as we're testing, okay? I would come in here, I would shut the door, this gives me a nice clean air. Okay, the exhaust fans are running. I'm gonna open this back up. But, so what, what you do is you hook up, hook up the machine. Just a coupler, you hook it up, and then you hit the start, you hit the green start button. So what we have here is a, it's a helium, it's a, obviously it's a helium tester machine. What it does, it, it sniffs, for helium molecules. The reason we use helium molecules is because it's the second, it's the second, second molecule on the, the second smallest molecule on the periodic table. Okay? So it's gonna, it's gonna cycle through. You would actually test it. We test each braze joint. We go onto the coil. We just make sure we don't have any leaks before we, before we send it on to the next station. So. All right, Michael, let me go ahead and go around, okay? Go this way, I guess. Okay, we're gonna, you can just follow us along here. We're gonna go around to the rest of our charging area. We have to walk around. As you see here, we have evaporators that are brazed and they're ready to go to the assembly lines. What you see here is all finished refrigeration units. Okay, because, because we use a pure propane refrigerant, we need to have a safety firewall in place, and it's, in, it's an exhaust system also. If there is ever a major leak on any of our units, the exhaust system kicks on and it sucks out all the propane because it's, uh, it's flammable. We have, we have our vacuum pumps right over here. What our vacuum pumps do for us is it removes any moisture or dirt that may be in our system. Uh, that's not good for refrigeration systems. After they're on a the vacuum pump for 20 minutes, they come down the roller track. What we do here is we grab our scanner, our scan gun, just like you're checking out at a convenience store you know, or at Walmart. Scan it, 
And that puts the proper charge into this into this automatic charging machine. Okay, so this gets hooked up. This will get hooked up to the coupler, and then it charges depending on the refrigeration unit. It puts the proper charge into it. Okay, now moving down the line, this here is what we call our ultrasonic ultrasonic welder. This is how we seal all of our refrigeration units. Okay, we're gonna go like this. Okay, as you notice, it actually welds it and it pinches it off. And right now it's a little warm to grab, but this is actually how our, our units are sealed. So no propane will get out. So we throw that in the bucket. Okay, heading over this way. This is the final, the final couple steps in the, in the refrigeration department here. Each unit gets plugged into our high pot tester. What we're doing here is we're checking the electrical system for any short circuits. And then each unit gets, we call it leak tested. We get leak tested one more time to make sure nothing is leaking on our units. Okay. And then each unit gets loaded onto a particular cart, depending on what assembly line is it is going to. So, okay, uh, bear with us on this. We're gonna take a long walk to the front of our building and uh, we're gonna show you our school milk assembly line. So, okay. Uh, so as we're going up the ramp here, off to the right, you'll be able to see our crating line. Uh, just as I'm walking, I'm just going to let you know, we had, uh, in 1944, John, Buff John Buffington invented beverage air first cooler. It was originally made in his garage in Punxsutawney, PA. Punxsutawney Company was the name of our company until it merged in, and moved into Brookville. He was the inventor of the, of the first forest air refrigeration system. So in 1944, this all began. As we're coming around this corner here, you can see a lot of uh, prefab parts, like all these parts here that, that you can see were made down in our press room. They're all formed. They all get put to the proper assembly line. And then as they go down, it starts to actually look like a cooler. So each step along the way is very critical. Each, everybody has to be involved on this. We have a lot of different departments that all work together to make the final product. So, okay, as we come down here, this is actually our school milk line. Right now, they actually happen to be making the forced air unit. Uh, this would be a liner, a cabinet liner. You have parts, they get welded to, stapled together. Okay, so this is the, that's the liner. Right here you have a liner, and this is the cabinet, okay? Right here at this station, the, the liner gets stuck down, it gets placed down into the cabinet. If you see this little gap here in between the cabinet and the liner, that's where the unit is going to be foamed. See that little, we, we foam all of our coolers to, to keep them insulated just like you would at your house or, or your refrigerator at your house would be. Here's where the, the units get foamed. The foam goes in there and then it has to set for 10 minutes to make sure it's cured and ready to go. Down here is a cabinet. Right after it got foamed, you can see a little bit of it leaking out. Okay, right here's the station where the, the unit base, it's a, the cabinet is upside down right now. The unit base actually gets flipped and bolted down. That way it's, it's easier for the bolter to, to put the cabinet on or the casters on while it's upside down. This next station is where they would, if they were doing this right here right now, they would actually be putting the completed refrigeration system into the cabinet right here at this station.
This is what we call our ST model. It's cold wall. As you notice, there's no fans on the inside. It's designed to stay cold during the lunch break of the cafeteria in the high school or all the schools around the world. It keeps the milk cold with the doors open. This is where the doors, this is where the doors and the lids are installed. And if you follow me down around this corner, this is a cooler. It's on the vacuum pump, just as back in the refrigeration apartment. It will go into the charging area that we have out here. It goes into the charging area that we have out here. And once it gets charged, it gets brought back here. And it gets put on a temperature test. And if I have Michael go over there and show you the screen on the, what a, what a cooler does is it gets cold and then it shuts off and then it warms back up. And that lets us know everything is cycling properly, so. So hopefully everybody enjoyed their tour this evening. We'd like to thank everybody for allowing Beverage Air to showcase local manufacturing right here in Brookville, PA. We are the sole manufacturer of Beverage Air and Victory products. So anytime you see us in the restaurants or your stores, you know where they were built. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Doug. So we are just waiting for our next company to join. Does anyone have any quick questions? If not, Jocelyn's going to throw up a poll while we wait. Can you throw it up or do you need me to? I think I can. Okay. So we have a poll we'd like you to answer. Pauline, did you see we have how many employees at Beverage Air question? Um, how many employees at Beverage Air? Mm -hmm. um, I know they're constantly hiring, um, especially with coming back from COVID. Um, they were shut down for a while. I'm going to, we'll be able to save that question and we can ask Doug when he joins us next Tuesday. Okay. And then we have a question, is it possible for us to be able to show these videos to our classes for career education? And we will address this later in, later tonight, we will address that question. Cool, Colleen, Catherine is on, but real quick, I'm gonna show the results of our poll here. Um, okay, so you're right, 52% um, of, you came up with manufacturing, but the healthcare is right behind. So um, those are the two top ones. We're going to talk a little bit more about the labor um, statistics, like Pam talked about, um, 
on our third week. So you'll get a little more insight on that and some of, again, the skills needed um, to prepare your student for that. So good job on that one. And that leaves us right into is, I can't see, did she sign off again or? No, nope, there she is. Okay, I see her. <laughs> so we're going to go into our next tour. So our next company comes from Ridgeway, Pennsylvania, and they were founded in 1997. They are a leading DOT qualified pipeline and site work contractor. So Catherine, I don't know if you're ready or not. I'm here. Hi, there you are. <laughs> so our next guest is Catherine Bartroff. She is the Chief Financial Officer for Allegheny Contracting, and she has a video to share with you. I actually have a couple of videos because it, uh, it cut off in the middle of my first video, but, um, but they basically are a continuation one of the other. So am I able to share my screen or? You should be able to, I did make you a co-host. So okay. you would just click the share screen down below. Oh, there we go. Okay, the question is, can you see me? Here we go, share. Okay, are you able to see my screen? We see you. Okay. Okay, I shared my screen. I'm not sh sure. Uh-oh. Let me see here. Okay, can you see that? We see a picture of you. Okay, so this is the video. So you'll have to let me know if it, if it, uh, this is what I took earlier while I was at the shop. So I'm hoping it goes through. Hi guys, I'm Catherine from Allocating Contracting. I'm the Chief Financial Officer. Uh, today I'm gonna show you guys around our workplace so that you guys can see what we do here and why we do it and uh, hopefully teach you a few things and let you meet some of the amazing people who make everything that we do possible. Uh, right now I'm leaving my office. This is the administrative office. Um, as you can see, there's I have a lot of stuff on my walls. Um, coming down the hallway, uh, you guys can see Sarah. This is our administrative assistant, That's Sarah. Um, so she handles all of our fleet acquisitions and uh, all of our registrations and things for our vehicles because we work a lot with PennDOT. Uh, this is our fleet manager. This is Elliot. Hi. It's cool. Uh, and so he makes sure that our fleet stays in tip top shape and makes sure that our camp, our mechanics are taken care of. Uh, this is Caroline. Hello. She handles all of our accounts payable and accounts receivable. Uh, she makes sure that we send out our bills to our customers and that we write our checks to the vendors that we owe money to. This is our accountant, Tom. Hello. Um, they don't know that I'm doing this ahead of time. So just to let you know, that's why they're a little shocked. Um, it's, uh, you know, Catherine's always up to something. Um, is there any mail? I might as well, because I have to go down to the other building. Um, is there anything that I'll do that later. Um, okay, so I'm going to take you guys out back now so that you guys can see um, our mechanic bay and where our guys do our work uh, to take care of our, our fleet. That's Elliot's office. Elliot loves his job, don't you, Elliot? He loves his job. 
Okay, so out here is where our mechanics do all their work. This is how they keep all of our vehicles maintained and safe for our guys, our operators to use them. So this is some of the, the things that they use. This is actually one of the vehicles that we're working on right now to get it safe to go out to the field. As you can see, there's no tail lights on it yet. This is one of our utility trucks. Um, so we'll give you a better look of it. And then of course, as you can see behind me, we have more stuff in the bay that we're working on right now. Um, we have a, what they would call a uh, tapping machine. And then we also have a forklift right here. And then we have an excavator over here. And another excavator. So these ones we just bought. So they're getting ready to go out. And then of course we have a regular pickup truck, which is probably getting maintenance for oil changes and stuff like that, which is what you have over here. And then uh, over here, this is where we uh, keep all of our extra parts and stuff like that to repair all these vehicles. And it goes back over here, which you guys can see. And so there's just all kinds of different parts and stuff that we use to do our job. Uh, that our guys use to keep all of our vehicles maintained. We have about 350 pieces of equipment out in the field that our people use all the time on jobs. We do utility pipeline contracting, so obviously we dig in the dirt a lot. Um, out here, some of our guys are shutting down for the winter because obviously it's getting cold out there. So you can get an idea of how many of our guys are parked out here right now. Right there is Jeff. He's uh, looks like he's hooking up something to get a piece of equipment taken out to a job on one of our rigs. So Jeff does a lot of work um, in the field to get our guys uh, the equipment that they need when they need it. So um, he's probably taking that down to West Virginia. We obviously we do work in a lot of states. So we have uh, West Virginia and Ohio and Kentucky. Uh, we also have some work in Maryland, uh, Virginia, uh, New York. There are several different places that we that we do work. And so obviously, you know, we have to transport that heavy equipment. So we have our big rigs take the equipment out. This is our wash bay. So this is where we clean off the equipment that comes in. It's all messy and dirty because it's been, you know, it's working out all the time. Most of our equipment doesn't sit it uh, unless there's something wrong with it. Uh, other than that, it stays out in the field and it makes money for the company. So I'm gonna take you guys down a little bit lower to the bigger building. Because this is actually the small building. Uh, because I have to go down the hill a little bit, we're gonna get in my car and drive down the uh, parking lot to the building down a little bit further so that I can show you guys the rest of our of our property here. So you guys can watch me drive now. Sorry. <sighs> Only for a minute, I promise, and I'll introduce you to some more of the other people who help make all this happen. As we drive by, I'll show you guys some of the uh, some of the stuff that's on the way down, which is where we store a lot of our equipment, our, our uh, some of our stuff down, some of the stuff that we might use for parts. Um, we've got that over here. So this is where we just were back here. And now this is where some of our stuff is stored. So this is uh, where we keep a lot of our other stuff. And then of course, we're passing by Jeff's truck right now. And this is the truck that he is loading up to go to uh, probably West Virginia, like I said earlier. We can say hi to Jeff if he'll say hi to us. 
Jeff. We're doing another program for that. Well, it's the Zoom thing. So I was telling the kids about what we're doing and, and stuff. And it's for our workforce, uh, you know, program. Great. So where are you headed? This is Jeff. He's one of our drivers. He transports equipment for us. So where are these guys going? These are going down by Richmond, Virginia. They're going to Richmond, Virginia. So he, it's his responsibility to make sure that all of this is on here safely that it's secure because obviously we don't need one of these big pieces of equipment flying off the truck while it's going down the road. And it's his job to make sure that the equipment is safe and that the general public is safe as he's transporting this all the way to Virginia. So how many hours are you going to have to drive? About seven. Six and a half, seven hours. Six and a half to a seven hour drive. So he's probably not coming home tonight, I would guess, because he's going to have to stay down there. Yes. So, okay, now we're going to go show them the rest of the building. Okay. <laughs> stay with me, guys. It's crazy how we have to do this these days, right? <laughs> Jeff's a really nice guy. He's a very sweet man, and uh, he does a really good job for us. Um, you never underestimate the importance of good people uh, that work for you because they are your most important asset. All this equipment that you guys are looking at right now is worth millions of dollars, but your people are priceless. They absolutely are the most valuable asset that a company has because your people are the ones that make it all work. They're the ones that make everything happen. They make everything fall into place and they ultimately can make or break your company. I can't say that enough. And I say that to all of our new hires and I say that to everyone who I do these programs with. So we just pulled up outside of the larger building. So you guys saw that. Now this is the larger building. This is where a lot of our employees are, especially field crew workers. Uh, this is where we do a lot of training, uh, where we do a lot of testing. So you can see this is where we're going in here. This is our front lobby. And He's obviously out on a job site right now, but this is Jamie's office. He's our safety coordinator. He's actually our, our manager. He makes sure that everybody stays in compliance and we stay safe. This is Miss Lisa. She's our payroll manager and our HR manager. She makes sure all of our employees are taken care of. We're doing Zoom meetings now for the students because they're, they're not allowed to be on site so we're doing so we're talking to students at the Brockway School District today oh, so hi everyone so Miss Lisa here she makes sure that everybody's taken care of she makes sure that everyone gets their paychecks she makes sure that everyone you know uh, is in compliance gets their vacation time gets their sick time you name, what, it. You name it whatever whatever is necessary Miss Lisa does so now we're gonna go bye. show them bye <laughs> I don't know if Tammy's in her office. She's an HR generalist. Uh, this here that we're walking into right now, this is our main training room. So this is where we will have meetings. This is also where we train people. It's a pretty large room. Some of you may have seen it before in some of our other programs. Um, when we have our state of the company address at the beginning of every year, this room is packed with more than 100 people because we have 163 people working for us at this point. Uh, this is where we do testing and some training. This is our computer lab. Let's see, what else can I show you guys? We have a small lunch room that's off to the side over there for when we have our catered lunches. That's over there. And then when you come through here, this is the hallway with some of the administrative offices, the restrooms and things like that. Oh, uh, look who's here today, guys. There's a puppy. It is not infrequent to find puppies around here. We love dogs. This is Miss Kelly. These are students from the Brockway School District. Oh, hello. We're now doing our programs via Zoom. Oh, okay. And this is her, Bowser. Bauer. Bauer. Yep. This is Bauer. So it's Say not hi on. To the kids, Bauer. Say hi. Oh, look, him bringing us a toy.
Okay, I had to do this just so that you know, I had to do this in two. So this was, it cut off and this is the rest of it. Oh good, I thought I lost you. I'm back, I'm sorry. I thought I lost you guys. So that's Bauer. Okay, and Kelly, tell the kids like a little bit about what you do. Um, so I am in charge of all of the billing. Um, whenever we do different jobs, we have to bill to get the money back for those jobs. Um, so I take care of all of that. And then I also make sure as the guys are making credit card purchases on their cards that they're giving us our receipts for those. Um, and then alongside of that, anytime we have big loads um, that we need to move with equipment um, on big back trucks and trailers, I have to make sure we Catherine, have- Catherine, everyone's video is stuck yeah. on Bowser or Bauer. Okay, so, so you Kelly's guys job is really important because if she- Hold on, so are you guys not seeing Hold on a second. Okay. Hold on. Let me see. I want to make sure you're seeing the secondary. Okay. Let me try this again. There. Oh, good. I thought I lost you. I'm back. I'm sorry. I thought I lost you guys. So there that's Bauer. Okay. And Kelly, tell the kids like a little bit about what you do. Um, so I am in charge of all of the billing. Um, whenever we do different jobs, we have to bill to get the money back for those jobs. Um, so I take care of all of that. And then I also make sure as the guys are making credit card purchases on their cards that they're giving us our receipts for those. Um, and then alongside of that, anytime we have big loads um, that we need to move with equipment um, on big back trucks and trailers, I have to make sure we have all the appropriate documentation to be able to move those through the different states. So Kelly's job is really important because if she doesn't get her job done, then we don't get paid properly. And obviously, if we don't get paid properly, we can't pay people. So, you know, that's, that's an important piece to any business. Um, okay. Bye, Bauer. Bye. Bauer is the chief protection officer. <laughs> See that? All Chewy toys will be protected. We have a little kitchen over here. And then just some more offices and there's a drafting room and I'll show you guys the bay in the back so you guys can see that. Um, back here are some of the executive offices. And then through here, if you guys can see, this is our secondary warehouse. This has a lot of our fittings and our, uh, and our pipe and stuff like that that we use for jobs, uh, stuff that the guys might need, uh, either for jobs or equipment. Um, hi. Uh, so this is a, it's a pretty large building and uh, we bring orders in here every single week uh, and they go out on, on job sites uh, for our guys to use um, over there. A lot of water. We bring water in by the pallet full because obviously our guys are very hard at work and they're in the field and so they got to stay hydrated. That's really important. And then you come back here and this is our much larger bay. You can see some of the equipment back here, some of the trailers that we use. You guys can see just how big this is over here. We have one of our larger trucks down here um, and then these are some of the steel pipes that, that our welders work with. So this is what our, uh, what our gas runs through, transmission, and the guys work on these so that they're safe for people to use, um, you know, so that your homes can get gas to them. Um, right here, here's one of our big tank trucks. And then over here, this is another one of our uh, fusion machines. And then we have the lockers over here, which is where we have some of the consumables is what we call them. Uh, so these are like safety glasses and um, other PPE that we keep available so that the guys can check them out as needed uh, when they need something that they've run out of. So as you can see down here, we have, uh, you know, hard hats, uh, we have drill bits. We have all sorts of different things that our guys use every day to do their job to ensure that you guys have natural gas to your home. Uh, we have straps and tie downs, uh, vests, 
as you can see, um, just everything that any of our guys might need to do their job to the best of their ability. Uh, and then when they need something, they check it out, and then we know that they've taken it, and then we know when to reorder it when we get low. And uh, we'll make one more round around the back, um, just to let you guys see the back of, of the site as we head back up to the upper building. But that's pretty much the entire, the entire, uh, the entire grounds for as much as I can show you guys on a video anyway. Um, we have some extra storage up there that we build out up there. So I do think I hear Maya. Maya's a good sport. Do I hear him? We're doing a video for the kids at the Broadway School District. For, so, because we don't do in-person meetings anymore. This is all on Zoom. So these are some of our workers here. So they're getting ready to move on from, you know, school. So, it's, you know, what are they going to do? And where can they go? And what are their options? So kind of showing them around the workplace what we do here. So does somebody have the ability to open the door? Because I left my key card at the upper building. That's embarrassing. Sorry, guys. Yeah, because I'm going to go out to my, to my vehicle and I'm going to make a circle around the building. And then I can let you guys go because I'm sure you have plenty of other things you guys need to do today for schoolwork. You don't want your teachers getting on you for not getting your work done. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to head back out to my vehicle now. So I'm walking back through here, but then um, I'm going to take you guys around the back of the building because there's some more equipment back there and uh, down further in on the hill that's where we're going to be building our next building which is where ultimately our fleet is going to go. The, uh, the fleet shop that I showed you earlier uh, was a smaller one it's where we started everything but um, obviously things have grown uh, things have changed and so because things have grown and things have changed we need more space so our fleet's going to be moving down to this other building that is not built yet because we haven't even gotten the permits for it yet. Um, and so let me turn my vehicle on here and then I will take you around back and you guys can see the land that we just bought and we're going to be building a new shop down there and some new offices down there for uh, specifically for the maintenance and repair of these big vehicles and, and this fleet that is essential to the operation of this business. Um, so I'm going to turn this around here so you guys can see it. So these are some of our dump trucks and some of our other larger rigs that move equipment. So you can see those giant transmission pipelines right there. Those are being taken out on a job to be installed. And you see how big those are? Those are the ones that run underneath freeways. They run underneath roads. Um, and then over there, obviously, we have regular box trailers and things like that. And as we circle around down here, you're going to see some of our bigger equipment. This is our much larger excavators. Um, and these just these uh, do a lot of ground moving. These are for our bigger jobs that we need for these larger pipes. And then if you look down here, down in that area, right down there, that's where the new shop is going to be. So that's the land we bought that we're clearing for our new shop where we're going to be building a, um, where we're going to be building more uh, places for our mechanics to work, as I was saying earlier. These are some more earth movers down here. Dump trucks. Yeah, there are dump trucks that don't look like regular dump trucks, but those are dump trucks right there. At least that's what we use them for. We use them to haul material out, um, especially in bad wooded areas because some of our work is done out in the woods. And now we're heading back up to the office, uh, the upper office, to give you an idea. So this is what it looks like from the upper office. Okay, guys, well, it was nice talking to you guys. It was nice showing you guys our place of work. Um, I hope you guys are interested. I hope uh, 
one day you'll look at uh, maybe doing construction with Allegheny, uh, a, uh, making that an option for yourselves, wherever your life takes you. I'm not sure where you guys plan on going with your, with your endeavors, but if this is uh, something that interests you, we certainly would love to have you here. And we love our employees and we very much are focused on development. And uh, so we hope to see you guys. Bye. Catherine works a lot with our Brockway area school to do tours when we are able to do tours in person. Um, so thank, thank you for creating that video for us. Um, she's a very busy lady. Not only does she uh, do the finance work for Allegheny Contracting, she holds many different hats throughout her community. And we have a question. What has been the biggest reason that the company has been able to expand as of recent? So recently, um, we've done the majority, we've basically tripled in size in the past uh, two to three years. Um, the reason we've been able to do that is because we expanded outside of this, of this footprint. So in other words, we took a, a more uh, national approach. So instead of just staying to our, to our existing market, we expanded out to all the states surrounding Pennsylvania. That's where we focused on first. Um, we now encompass work in every single state uh, that surrounds the borders of Pennsylvania. Um, in addition to that, we now have employees in states even beyond that. So we have employees that have now come here from Texas, North Carolina, uh, Oklahoma is our newest hire. Uh, we had three guys come here from Mississippi. Um, and they're, they're maintaining their residence in their existing states, but it was a way for us to draw talent into the area, uh, ultimately with the goal to expand the company, but to also expand the community in this area, to bring uh, more money to this community, to bring more talent to this community. So we've been able to do quite a bit. We uh, started in, at the end of 2017, when I came here, we had 56 employees. Um, as of this month, we now have 163. So um, we were uh, in about three states. We had done work in three states back in the end of 2017. We now do work in eight states now, and we have employees from 13 different states that uh, work for us. Um, and they choose to travel um, or they can stay here. We have employees that are strictly Pennsylvania employees. They live in Pennsylvania, they work in Pennsylvania, but we have people that, you know, right now I have a guy who lives in Georgia, but is right now on a job in Ohio. So it really is just a matter of what you want to make, what you want to make of your life. Some people prefer uh, staying close to home and then others want to travel. For those who want to travel, we compensate very well and we pay for training. We pay for training. We pay for education. We have uh, a guy who's a, uh, who was interested in becoming a diesel mechanic. He just graduated this May from Ridgeway and uh, we sent him up to Ohio to get his uh, welder certification because he wanted to be a welder and uh, so we paid for him in full to go and be a welder in uh, well not in Ohio he's coming back but his education he's going up to Cleveland to do his uh, training and he'll be there for the next three months and then he wants to come back and work for us as a welder so we're very big on, on development and uh, getting people the skills they need. I personally am in law school now, um, and the company is paying for me to go through law school so that I can better serve us internationally because we do have a few international clients that are uh, they're from Canada, but they have another headquarters in Texas, but it helps us in development. So, uh, so we're very big on, on developing and getting people the training and the education they need to help themselves and help the company go further. And I think that's been huge in uh, getting a good response from the workforce. So we're gonna hold the rest of the questions because Catherine will be joining us again next Tuesday for our panel. And we can all do question and answers then. Um, so, but we'd like to thank you, Catherine, for taking time out of your night. We know you're busy with your kids and stuff, so. I locked them out. They're in the other room right now. I do. I have, I have six, I have six biological children and I have two foster kids. So there's eight kids running around my house right now outside that door. 
<laughs> but they all know when I'm locked, when I'm locked in here, you guys need to leave me alone a minute. So it's okay. <laughs> well, thank you again. And we're going to move on with Jocelyn's got some stuff for us to do. Awesome. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. All right, actually I have something fun, hopefully, um, for you. We, um, a lot of our schools take part in the What's So Cool About Manufacturing video contest. Um, it is a statewide program that's been running for years. We got involved about four years ago, um, our local schools, and it's, we take sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. They make a theme, um, they visit a local manufacturing uh, business, and they and build a video about what's so cool about manufacturing um, and tie that all together um, and then we get we do award ceremonies and make it just really exciting and fun for the kids unfortunately we're not able to have um, one this year for 2021 but any of you middle school teachers that are interested um, in being involved next year we really encourage you to do that and we can help you get hooked up with that um, but we thought it'd be fun to show you a couple of their videos. So we're going to start with um, Cutco um, up that Oswego Valley students did for Cutco. Um, I know you might have some had some students show you um, that is after they've graduated, making some money in college or whatnot. But um, this shows a little bit of our um, wood industry as well that um, shows up in those northern counties and over in Cameron. So um, and then of course here in Clearfield. So just to give you that view, we're going to do Cutco and then, um, of course, Zippo that you've heard about. Um, two different types of videos, too, so just show you that there's a lot of, of difference out there. So I hope you enjoy these. So, the core, two side panels, and foot simultaneously to travel on three conveyors to create a clean production flow. And lean means when the conveyor belt, the moves the product from one operation to the next, so we don't have work in progress, which is in cost for the company. Now we have to take the panels and glue the panels on the side, just like this here. Next, the radio frequency glue and dries the block of seconds. Then the block has to go through a lot of sanding. So we take the edges, we make them rounded. We're looking for imperfections in the wood to make sure it's top quality. Next to the block, the foot. Well, what about the foot making process? Now, to get there, the foot has to be glued together. Glue the panels on the end. Next, the radio frequency glue dries the glue. Ah. The foot travels to the table saw where the top is cut off. This creates room for the foot to be slotted to hold the same point. Next, the foot is sanded on all six sides. The wood is checked. Once finished, the foot is hot sand with the cut coating before draining the block. And that foot and core are glued together. Now the block goes into a spray booth where we spray with finish, seal, and stain. We manufacture oak wood block for the sole purpose of being able to store your nitrogen. Lacquer makes it really shiny. But so, then it goes to inspection where we sell it here, period. And it is packaged for shipping. So what makes Cutco so unique? Cutco always allows us to try new things. We are one of the few companies that publicly offers a forever guarantee where you can, you know, replace the product at any time if there's something wrong with it. So this is what we found out, that Cutco cares about community, about family, about clothes. That's the Cutco way. That's it. We produce a very high quality product. We take a lot of pride in it. It helps us maintain our environment. 
Okay. And while Jocelyn's loading this up, remember these videos are produced by students. They lay out the framework that they want to use. They get the video equipment from the Workforce Solutions staff. Their teach, they have a teacher that takes them around, arranges the meeting, and then helps them in the studio to produce it. Um, the videos are produced on computer programs that all schools have access to. So it's pretty neat to see what these young kids can do. Colleen, I just want to, I want to just add that Kathy Cook and Katie Green, both teachers participating tonight, have participated um, as teacher co coaches, I think all four years um, for, since we got involved in the video contest. So they're going to be our spokespeople at some point, and we're hoping next year um, we're going to have all of the schools involved. Um, and if I missed, I, I think I went through the list of names and caught everybody um, that was a teacher coach. So I just had to let people know we have a couple of the teacher coaches participating. It's a, it's a commitment, but I know they had a great time with it. Thank you, sorry. Yeah, thanks for that, Pam. And then... What's so cool about manufacturing is watching photographs turn into a luxury and collectible item for so many around the world. Colleen. And just one little tidbit, if you didn't know, Zippo Lighter in Bradford also has a museum that's free to go and walk through. So I am going to share my screen. And our next company is coming to you from St. Mary's. Well, there we go. And they are coming from St. Mary's. They are a manufacturing company that is rising the bar on small metal part manufacturing. 
but even though they couldn't be here tonight, they did send us a video to share with you. Can you hear that? No, I'm not hearing anything. Could you hear that? No. Okay, hold on. No. I'm Doug Bauer. I'm Director of Human Resources here at Horizon Technology. This feels, no, that feels weak already. It does. I'm Doug. Oh, Merrick. This is a bunch of crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Zoom in on that right there. Can you tell? He's HR. <laughs> yeah. You're I'm wrong. joking. <laughs> so, you're the one who started all this. How'd you even come up with the idea? It was really came out of that whole idea, that whole dream of, or that whole vision of trying to expand the use of powdered metal finding solutions for our customers that they didn't have available today. We talk about people, and sometimes it sounds cliche. Throughout our entire history, every time we were faced with a challenge, the right person came through the door with, the, with, with a vision and, and ideas about technologies that can support these types of changes. Even with our automation, mm -hmm. we've done so much with automation, and never once did we sit here saying, Let's do this so we can eliminate six people. <laughs> yeah, right. We didn't do that. We yeah. did that so that those people could do something a little more exciting rather than sitting there picking parts and let's have it to where they don't need to stand there. Let's automate that. But we don't want you to lose your job over this. Mm -hmm. We want you to now do bigger and better things at the company mm -hmm. because we can't just have average people. <laughs> right. That's... You can't get into the markets that you're talking about. We can't get to uh, the cutting edge mm -hmm. or be in front if we're just average. There's a lot of change going on in our industry and there's a lot of questions about what will the future be. We've been able to really begin investing in a lot of new technologies. You know, when you take a look at some of the materials that we've been working on and processes that we're working on today, really to try to position ourselves for what that market is going to be in the future. You hear a lot about, you know, soft magnetic composites. And maybe it was a material that existed before the market needed it. Okay, and yeah. I think what's exciting about today is the changes that we're seeing in the marketplace, um, it's creating a want for these types of materials. And you look at how that, that kind of technology and where it can go. You know, today we're working with alloys and, and, and such that we hadn't ever been able to work with in the past. And now when you look at some of the results that we're seeing, the strengths that we're able to achieve, um, that can far exceed even anything that you see today, like in our standard 35. That's exciting. And those are things that we're now able to offer a customer today that have never been able to be offered in the past. And because, you know, part of what, what you're saying, uh, with the development of materials, with our centering development and reaching levels, I'll call it, mm -hmm. that were thought to not be attainable, mm -hmm. now, uh, we're in the process of exploring a purchase of another compacting press. And we already know yeah. <laughs> it might not exist in the market, <laughs> right? <laughs> what yeah. we need yeah. to do this, but we know they can make it. Right. We're in conversations with manufacturers to say, this is what we need right. to help because of all the technology we've advanced in. Mm -hmm. We need that to be able to compact a certain way. And some of that's not available in the market today. So Doug, you know, you look around and you see we do powdered metal differently. Yeah. We wanted to offer a technology that other powdered metal companies uh, didn't do. And we also wanted to get into markets and areas where powdered metal didn't exist. We did things that other startups didn't do in order to do powdered metal differently, to push the limits. And that's what I think of when I think we do it differently. When I look mm -hmm. at what they're doing, they aren't necessarily pushing the envelope for technology. They aren't looking for a new market. Uh, they aren't developing relationships with suppliers. They're making parts that generally the powder metal industry has been in quite some time. That's what I think of yeah. when we say we do it differently. That's beautiful.
Right. I'm going to go ahead, Colleen. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for still hanging in there. We are going to switch over to healthcare for just a little bit. And um, we did have some events with our students um, earlier this year. And Emily Warwick was um, an RN with the Caring Health um, Care Network, which she's going to give you a tour of. Um, she has become a nurse, nurse practitioner with them now, so um, her position has changed a little bit, but the tour shows you um, that this uh, group in Phillipsburg does a lot of different things in one place, and I know that we're starting to see more and more of that. Um, when we talk about healthcare with your students, um, we're gonna explore from physicians down to phlebotomists um, and what the different options are for them, and because as you know, um, healthcare is a very, um, big employer in our area. So we want to do that. So here's Emily to give you a tour of this facility. Hello everyone. My name is Emily and I'm the nurse manager here at the Caring Health Care Network. And I'm here to just give you an idea and a quick overview of uh, the services that we provide here in a rural healthcare center. Um, we offer primary care. We also offer behavioral health services such as counseling and we have a um, psychiatrist and a nurse practitioner um, who see patients. We also offer chiropractic services and we our primary um, population that we serve here is for pain management. So uh, we do offer quite a bit of stuff here. We do have a anesthesiologist that comes in and she sees patients and provides um, injections. We have a fluoroscopy room that she does the injections under. We have an x-ray tech who assists her with that. We also have LPN, RN medical assistants here. Um, we do have um, like human resources, but our main office is out of Oregon, the state of Oregon. Um, so we're just a small entity in that uh, corporation. So I'm going to take you on just a little bit of a tour to um, show you uh, what we have here. Okay. This is our injection room and the fluoroscopy machine that we do all of our injection center. We have a little recovery room for the um, post injections. We can still come here to recover. And here's our chiropractic room. We also have our own lab here that we run our um, urine drug screens for the pain clinic. So that was just kind of a quick view of some of the rooms that we have here. Um, I did forget to mention that we have, um, I showed you our lab. We have a lab that we run our own urine drug screen here. Every patient that comes in for pain management, um, every month they have to come in, get their medicine, and they have to do a urine drug screen. So we run that on site. We also um, do phlebotomy here. All the nurses here are trained and we um, draw blood and we can set that out for the patient. So, you know, we offer that to any of our patients that come here or anyone that's off the street that wants to come in here and get their blood drawn. We do offer that. So, um, soon here we'll be moving to um, a new office right up the road and he is going to offer quite a few more services. We're going to try to get into specialty services such as rheumatology, um, maybe dermatology. So we're just trying to bring in some more um, specialty services to this area so that, you know, most of the time, a lot of patients have such a long wait uh, to get into the specialty services. So um, we're excited that we're expanding um, and growing as a privately owned company. So um, that is, that's it. So um, have a good day. All right. Yeah. Okay. okay, and we have um, one more poll for you too, to get an idea of the students that um, 
you're working with. Um, Kristen, it was the Caring Healthcare Network, um, and anyone else who didn't catch the name um, there in Phillipsburg. No, I don't want, this is not your poll. Hold on. There we go. That is your question. Yes, the question is what percentage of your students are interested in a healthcare career? Can everyone see the polling question? Okay, um, let me show you the results of that. Um, like I said, more, we're kind of wondering if we're on the ball with what we're sharing with students too, but um, it's like a lot of students really are starting to look in that, in that direction. So um, thanks for sharing that with us. And Colleen is gonna show you something we are very proud of. Okay, so we'll just take down the polling question. Okay. So how many of you as teachers go to YouTube to show a skill or a company or something that you want to give your students some more information? It can be YouTube, it could be Career One Stop. There's many different um, places where you can go and look at videos for skills or what manufacturing might be, things like that. Um, in 2018, we decided that we wanted something that was more local, regional in our area, that we could share with teachers that would highlight businesses in our area. And it started out as a elementary program and we called him Carl the Career Bear. So if you have not heard of Carl, you may be in the higher grades, some elementary schools have heard of him. He's a little furry teddy bear that goes around. Well, we decided to grow on Carl and we created a website that teachers could go on and watch tours of companies in our region. That being said, because elementary school, it is hard to get them into companies because of liability issues. But Carl has grown since then even more to include all the grades from kindergarten through 12th grade. And we are going to show you as soon as I can share my screen. This is the new Carl the Career Bear website. And it has changed. It is now Welcome to Career Exploration, the home of Carl the Career Bear. But on this site, What's really interesting, we're just going to do a really quick overview and we're going to get into something else on here. You can go to the teachers and we have benchmark activities already loaded up that you can pull from if you wanted to do a career exploration task in class to meet the state requirements. So they're listed here, they get added to every day. There's also the BEP activity list. That is the list of activities that Jocelyn and I have already 
done with schools. We can reenact it with any school, but that is also always growing. And we also have a way that you can request Carl to come into the classroom and come say hi to the students. The other thing this website is good for is you can actually come on here and do virtual tours. So what we're going to do for this tour is we're going to visit Paris Companies which is in Dubois, Pennsylvania. Carl visits Paris companies. Come on in, Carl. We have been so excited for you to visit us. For our first stop, let's go visit Mr. Stern. Hi Carl, how are you? Welcome to Paris. I understand you want to know a little bit about Paris and where we came from and where we are today and what the heck do I do? Well, my name's Dave. I'm the president here at Paris Cleaners, Paris Companies. And as a president, you know, I have to oversee so many different things. You know, we have 850 employees, we have thousands and thousands of customers, and I have to help bless all the policies that affect all of our customers and all of our employees. Uh, and it's different now than what I did back when I was a child. So I thought I'd share with you, you know, when I was in fourth, fifth, sixth grade, I started to work in my dad's dry cleaners in Brockway, Pennsylvania. And I remember my first job, I used to take a hanger and we used to have to put this piece of cardboard on so they put trousers on the, on the hanger and they wouldn't slide off. And I would have to do that, and I'd have to do hundreds and hundreds of those. Of course, at the time, I thought that was uh, a lot of work. But what that did, that helped prepare me for the work world, and it helped create some discipline and some work ethic. And so from there, I went to college. I got out of college. I came back to work in the dad's dry cleaners, and we grew quite a bit, and today I'm the president of the company. And so I'd like to give some advice to all your friends that are in school right now. And I hope you can share with them how important it is to dream big, pick something you really like, and go after it. Because if you do that, and you do good in school, it'll create so many opportunities, and maybe those kids will be president of a company someday. Let's go look around. Always remember to wear your safety hat. Good job folding those towels, Carl. Look at all of those big dryers. Let's go visit some workers. We love having visitors here. They are working hard back there, sorting through everything that comes in off of the trucks. Let's go see what happens to the clean clothes once they come out of the dryer.
It's all pretty neat, huh? This is where all of the clean clothes get hung nicely on hangers and then go into a machine to get all of the wrinkles out. Hi everybody! Thank you for visiting Carl. We hope you enjoyed your tour of Paris. Come back and see us soon. Carl visits Paris. So as you can see, there are quite a few virtual tours. Some of them do feature Carl. There's a few that do not feature Carl. The Horizon Technology video that we had watched earlier is now uploaded onto this site also. But another interesting thing on the site is you can click here on the Career Pathways. And when you click on it, it will take you to this part of the website. And you can click on a career pathway folder. And it shows the high school diplomas. It shows you a pathway for that career industry. So there are quite a few on here to help your students decide where they would like to start, what is available to them, and other information. There's also a direct link to the Ready, Set, Work site, which we will be showing on day three. And then when you scroll down, there's some other interesting things to help with career exploration. There is also a calendar of events that go on. Right now, we're doing a healthcare and social assistance web quest for students. That can be reached from here from the site. And then Jocelyn and I have contact information here on the site also. That site is free for all teachers to use. There is no subscriptions or anything like that. And Jocelyn, I think you're up. I am. So we have a, a last tour from Miller Fabrication Solutions. Um, another you're going to see they do things, um, some things differently. Um, they are in Brookville area, and some of you are probably are. Um, we just had, we just finished manufacturing month in October, and did a lot of activities for it. And this is um, one of their their Maple Vale facilities. So that for you. So with that, let's let's take a look at some samples of fixturing in our legal bill facility tour. Cue it up, please. Morning 
location of the plate. Once this plate adjusted a little bit. Make sure that it's all the pieces that are supposed to out of this particular piece of sheet of material. Again, it's doing a double check. There it goes. You can see how fast it moves. Depending on the thickness of the material, twice as fast, generally, than the other machines. See, there doesn't take much time on this thickness of material. This thing is also different and creates a tag that is almost the point of being able to stay. I'm going to show you a CO2 laser on the other side here. You can see the CO2 laser is out in the open. You can see it moving. Not quite as fast as the other machine, but this is having a thicker plate. The units can cut up a half inch for one pound set for it. We have other equipment to cut thicker plate at a lot of facilities. But again, this is a CO2 laser. This is technology uh, a little older than the fiber lasers that we installed here just a year or so ago. We walk down through the shop here, you're going to see some uh, fabrications and different stages of weapons. We have 11 robotic shells and 18 robotic arms. Our robotic shells start to the annual part of low folding. We still have to pass that the uh, shells. And there's also a section that occurs after the press button. The shell turns the table to help you to press the body shell to the other side. It's also going to vary on the percentage of power well that the robot can do. Which on smaller parts, it may be able to do 100% of the well. But on some of these other parts, it might only do like 75% of the welding. And down here we see a, a picture where they're assembling the detail pieces and tacking it together. From there it will go to the weld robot. We see very picture table here for different size parts. On picture table, the weld can make the same part. Over and over again, we see six six hours. We have a six table design, after the six things to be designed. It allows us to create a new stop passing through the production and another guy can see that you can tell the part if need be. Well, down here is where we do the manual welding of the turn table. This facility here, we build our Intermediate size and small turn tables. This allows the uh, welders to machine the parts in position. One of the machines that we machine the parts on is this mill right here. It's actually machining a link. And you see setting here on the stand. Small horizontal mill. Okay, this here is the CNC machine. Five inch horizontal mill. This is where we're taking in the CNC. 
Right. And Colleen, you wanted to add something about Carl? Um, 
I had put it in chat that if oh, okay, I'm sorry. if the teachers utilize the site, if they have any suggestions or comments that they would like to either see added onto the site or just any comment in particular, you can always contact Jocelyn and I. Um, if there's a company you would really like to tour, um, but again, because of COVID, a lot of companies aren't doing in-person tours, you can always give us a shout out and we will contact that company and see what we can do about getting a virtual tour for the schools on. All you have to do is just let us know. So tonight was mainly just so that you could see into the companies and see some of the skills that they use, some of the jobs that they're doing that they are going to need to fill in the future. So does anyone have any questions? What about the company that B, uh, BWP is the company that makes the bats in Brookville? They are having some rearranging with COVID, but we can reach out to them and see what's going on um, if they would be able to do a tour. On the checklist, there is an exit ticket. When clicked on, it says that we need permission. Yes, the exit ticket will not be opened up until after the 17th on the last day. Where is this business located? The business that we just saw, Miller Welding, is located in Brookville. They have a few sites around, but their main facility is in the Brookville area. Pam had also put into chat if everyone saw that um, Miller Welding is a BEP partner. They help out quite a bit in the schools. If you would like to tour them to just reach out to Jocelyn or myself. For schools that are not in Jefferson or Clearfield counties, if you would reach out to Jocelyn and myself or Pam, um, at the Workforce Solutions for North Central PA, our main building, we can connect you with the CEC or career counselors that do take care of your area. Do you do anything with Wicket and Craig? I have not, but that doesn't mean we can't. We reach out constantly to new businesses or businesses we have not worked with. We have good relationships with a lot of the businesses. With being the workforce development for our region, if we're not, Jocelyn or I, are not in contact with a business, it does not mean that we don't have someone else in our office that is making contact with that business. And then can we do the Ready, Set, Work PA at any time during the time frame, or do we need to wait until the end? We are going to discuss the Ready, Set, Work website on the 17th for those that are having trouble navigating through it. But you can do those two classes on your own at any time. Jocelyn, do you have anything to add? No, but it is any two any two classes, right? Yes, any so they two have their, classes that have you feel you would like. Because this can be used in your classrooms as well, so it's a good um, feel free to learn. So we have another one in chat. You mentioned soft skills like communication skills. What about companies that might hire specifically you're looking for? So our discussion that we're going to have next Tuesday, which will be your day two, we will have some of the companies that you saw here today, Doug Reinzel, Catherine Bartroff, I'm just getting the list here, um, Doug Bauer from Horizon Technologies. They will all be on the panel and then we will also have a few other companies that will be on the panel to answer the questions of what type of skills they're looking for in new employees, what type of skills they feel that students are coming to that are lacking and it's causing them to have to spend more training dollars in order to get them up to where they need to be to put them out on the floor, 
Those type of questions we're gonna save for next week so that you can hear it directly from the employer. Pauline, I just wanna add also, when we review the labor market data, we'll make sure that we're sharing information that answers that question. Um, we look at all the different data from online job postings and it pulls together all the hard skills, soft skills um, that employers in the region are looking for. So if you have ideas of what you would like to learn more about, in, including that question, feel free to reach out to Colleen and Jocelyn and we'll make sure that we provide that information to you um, through the course of this program. Another question was when we went on to the course on Ready, Set, Work, it said we needed a code. You do not need a code. This site, Ready, Set, Work, is also used by our career links and that code is for them to track the people they're working with so that they know if they need assistance or not. Schools do not need a code, though there is a way that you can get a code for your classroom if you as a teacher would like the statistics of your classwork from your students. So when you see proceed with a code, you can ignore where it's asking for a code. Most companies do provide job shadowing. We had a question, do companies provide job shadowing? Most of the companies we work with do provide job shadowing. They feel it's an important part to have students in there, even if it's just for a day to three days to see what exactly goes on because sometimes you just can't see that type of information within a 45 minute tour. I do not have anything else for tonight, Jocelyn. No, thank you all for attending. Um, we'll see you next Tuesday.